Good morning, folks. The movie Groundhog Day starred Bill Murray as a weatherman caught in a time loop, repeating the same day again and again. Every day he got up, it was February 2nd, and he was off to find Poxitani Phil. His experiences led him to re-examine his life and priorities. When this movie was released in 1993, it was a modest success. Not a blockbuster, but moderately successful. Now, since then, though, it's become more popular. It's now considered one of the best comedy films ever and is valued for its cultural relevance and contributions. It's now ingrained in the public consciousness. The term Groundhog Day can represent a situation that seems to occur repeatedly. Now, I know a little something about Groundhog Day. Let me talk about that a little bit. My purpose, my reason for being here on Earth, is to create beauty. I call that art. Creation of beauty is art. And I create art that helps us learn, inspire, and empower. There are many times, though, when my art inspires people, if you will, to assign me the task of supporting their purpose. That is not quite the goal of my work. Now my goal is to help us all learn how to collaborate and execute, how to come together and get it done in ways that support our respective purposes. See, I'm your co-laborer, not your laborer. Once upon a time, recognition of this Groundhog Day condition was an automatic trigger to stand firm and say no. For example, 15 years ago, I led a project that walked 250 aspiring entrepreneurs through the process of writing their first business plan. Now, this plan was to be a five to seven page blueprint that would help them wrap their minds around their God-given ideas and then implement those ideas at their life's pace. That way, their visions would manifest at their appointed time. And though it would tarry, they would soldier on. The class's last writing assignment included drafting concrete next steps that they would execute after the end of our six weeks together. Now, more than one student included something to the effect of hire Derek as my first employee as one of their next steps. That was not quite the goal, people. I digress. Nowadays, Groundhog Days are a little trickier to handle. They occur more and more with people with whom I walk closely and admire. Responding now, it's not as simple as saying, oh, that ain't gonna happen, Captain. You can't do it like that. Now my response has to be more like, well, I can't do that, but here's what I can do. The best lessons are ones that teach you at least twice, at least twice. So experiencing the same situation multiple times can be painful, but still useful. Groundhog Day has a use in this earth. Now, just as it happened in the movie, each Groundhog Day might seem the same, but each presents a new opportunity to grow in how I handle myself. This is key. Because at this stage of my life, I recognize the importance of every relationship, conversation, and moment. See, they all matter. I feel an urgent need to redeem the time that I spend with everyone on my path. Now, this urgency leads me to often seek wise counsel when frustration clouds my big picture. So. Why do I have so many Groundhog Days? Let's, let's look at the big picture here. I posed this question to my main man, 
and he dropped some wisdom on me that I would like to share today. He said, your work has a technical resplendence, depth and flair that is awesome and at times can be intimidating. Now in particular, your music is that way. When I saw myself, your creative process, when you write the lyrics, you write the music, you produce the song, the video, man, the efficiency, the artistry, it's incredible. It's like watching prints. Thank you. But it causes people to say, hey, I like that, and I want to use that. But I can never learn to do all that. It's, it's easier for me to ask you to do it. Now that line of thinking is sometimes fearful, it's sometimes lazy, it's sometimes slick, manipulative, and controlling, and sometimes, brother, it's all the above. These are the thoughts of those who hold you in high esteem, he continues to say. These are also the thoughts of folks who ain't fond of you, but want to own and control those skills and talents. And the challenge is to discern the sincere from the profane and deal with the profane as profane and deal with the sincere as sincere. So you never want to deal with the profane as sincere. You never want to deal with the sincere as profane. You want to deal with all of it in humility and in a way that protects both your relationships and your time. Now the reward of doing so is to provide the profane an opportunity to become sincere, he says. Then he continues, he says, consider the story of Simon the sorcerer as told in the Bible's book of Acts, chapter eight, verses nine through 25, for those of you who are following in your own Bibles. Simon amazed people with his magic. He thought he was a bad man. Now other people did too. Then the apostles Peter and John rolled into Samaria and started imparting the Holy Spirit with the laying on of hands. Simon the sorcerer said, wow, I sure would like to be able to do that. Hey, you, Peter, John, you guys give me that ability? I'll pay you as much as you want. Then Peter comes back and says, hey man, keep your money and your iniquity and may you both perish. Who is death on the brother? You have no part in this work and you cannot prostitute this anointing. Repent and ask the Lord into your heart. Whew. Now that's a rebuke. Simon then said, hey man, sorry, I'm, I'm sorry. Would you pray that my life be spared? Please pray that these things you just wished on me do not happen. So my man says, yeah, this is the story that your story brings to mind. Now, so there's the end of his story for the sake of continuity and organization. Now that whole story right there will preach, as they say. I had to take a day and let all of that sink in. And then my first insight was to crack a joke. See, at least Simon offered Peter and John some money for what he wanted. It doesn't always happen to me. <laughs> yeah, jokes aside though, it, here's, a, here's a big picture. There's a big picture to see here. Peter smacked Simon pretty hard for trying to exploit it. Gave him a stern rebuke. Somehow, though, he did so in a way that left room for Simon's growth and redemption. There might have only been this much room, but enough room for Simon to go from trying to prostitute the anointing to asking for prayer. See, there's no clearer sign of the awareness of the need for repentance than a prayer request. Who knows what Simon became after that encounter. For all we know, he could have become a minister of the gospel. So this is why I gotta handle Groundhog Day a little differently now. And I think this is why I'm getting so many new chances 
to do so. Hmm. But wait, there's another free lesson here. See, the movie Groundhog Day was not instantly enshrined as one of the greatest comedies ever. I mentioned that a little earlier. It took a lot of time for its story, messages, and lessons to be analyzed, reconsidered, and embraced. I'm sure it was a hard movie to understand the first time you watched it. But now, it'll be remembered for all time. It is a fixture in our popular culture. So there's another good word for me as I consider the big picture. I spend way too much time lamenting how little people pay attention to my work and the essence and spirit that produces the work unless they see ways to exploit it. I get it though. See, if I don't share and expose my work to the possibilities of misappropriation, misunderstanding, and outright mocking, then its stories, messages, and lessons will never be analyzed, reconsidered, and embraced. I know it'll take a couple of times to figure out what I'm trying to say or where I'm going with all of this and whatnot. So what I have to do is continue to create and then wait. Say la. Thanks as always for listening.